Hey, what's going on everybody? It's the Fifth Avenue Project. We are back at it with another episode. Now today I want to talk about buffering. I always hear buffering and a lot of times when I hear the problems that people have with buffering, skipping random kickouts when they're streaming, I don't think people quite understand what it is because buffering can be caused by so many things. What I want to do in this video is basically make all you guys understand what buffering is first and foremost and on top of that what uh, you can do to alleviate buffering issues when it comes to streaming because most of us cut the cord here we're streaming our content and um, you gotta know what this is man I don't see anybody out there with a full video series on how to you know stop buffering and how to address it but just let's explain it from the top what it is buffering how to address it and how to prevent it going forward alright so the first things first things first what is buffering I mentioned this in other videos buffering is just pre-loading the data before you start to view the content basically what streaming is you're trying to download and play the content at the same time so whenever something can be downloaded and played simultaneously the device will stop and create a buffer between the play time and the download time this usually happens at the beginning of when you start to watch a stream but the issue happens when the buffer keeps happening throughout the playback so for example you start a movie say you start Avengers and you get your popcorn everything's ready that buffer should be happening right at the beginning for a few seconds and then it should go all the way through the, the video playback should never really catch up to the buffer so what you want to do right off top is create a larger buffer and how do you create a larger buffer you're going to need more RAM, but we're going to save that for later. I just want to explain to you guys what buffering is now. So buffering is all it is, is preloaded data. It's kept in temporary storage, which is your RAM. Once the buffer is filled up, it just passes along the data from point A to point B. So just to give you guys a visual, you have your computer or your whatever device. Let's say a Mi Box. I'm using a Mi Box at this moment. My Mi Box and then the content is hosted on another server so what happens is when I use something like Terrarium TV, Morpheus, whatever it's going to the server getting that info and when it comes back it comes back to my device my device takes the whole chunk of data and preloads some of it inside of a buffer and all the buffer does is allow you to transfer small chunks of data at a time for example if you see when you when you're on terrarium tv sometimes you see the uh the size of the the file it'll be like say if it's a, a hd movie it'll be like a gig you're, you're going to be transferring small bits of data at a time and that's what the buffer does it the buffer is actually meant to help you so again a buffer is just a temporary spot from this from the server you're fetching the info from into the buffer which is temporary which is basically powered by the RAM in your device. And once the buffer is filled, the data could be processed by your streaming device. So you have the large chunk of data. Instead of processing all the data at once or waiting for the device to process all the data, say a gig, like I just said, it'll, it'll buffer bits of the data. The buffer gets filled up, passes the data along to your device, which processes whatever that was in the buffer, and then round and round and go. So if you're watching a playback, I don't know if you guys have done this. If you watch, if you if you're streaming something, you'll see that when it, the the buffer line is always ahead of your playback line, you'll see that usually it's either white or gray, and that and that's usually ahead of the playback line. So that means everything is preloaded, 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 and then it processes once the buffer gets filled up. In reality, buffering saves time because. If it wasn't for buffering, we would have to wait for the entire data to be processed before watching it. Whereas with the buffer, you're preloading bits of data at a time, and once the buffer fills, it's being processed by your device, and that's how you view it. All right, guys, now that we got that out the way, now first and foremost, check your internet speed. Go to speedtest.net, test your internet speed when all your devices are on. Like if you have kids, if you have a wife, and everybody's on the wireless test your internet speeds when everybody's on see what you're left with because I recommend you have at least for for HD streaming I recommend 
at least 10 megabits per second if you're doing HD streaming. If you're doing 4K streaming, you got to have at least 25 megabits per second for 4K. But not many of you guys are doing the 4K streaming just yet. But if you do, you just have to keep that in mind. Internet speed is very important. Now, what, what you need to understand is the internet speed is definitely important if you want a smooth playback. All right, so if even if you have a great device, even if you're hardwired, even if uh, you have a bunch of RAM and your device, everything is perfect. If your internet speed is not up to par, you, you're gonna have you're gonna have issues, guys. So the first thing you guys should do whenever you have issues with any type of stuttering, kickouts, buffering type issues, where you just can't enjoy the content that you're trying to stream check your internet access that's the first thing because it doesn't matter what your hardware is you can have an nvidia shield on steroids if your internet connection is shit you're not going to have a smooth stream so make sure you check your internet connection with a high internet speed you have a better chance of streaming the content in real time real time meaning downloading and playing the content at the same time when your internet speed isn't fast enough to stream in real time, a buffer is created by your streaming device and playback is resumed once there's enough downloaded data in the buffer to prevent lag. That data is then processed by your CPU. So with that said, you don't want a full buffer and a garbage CPU. Your CPU has to be you know, able to process whatever data that was loaded into the buffer. So you need plenty of RAM, and also a capable CPU. As you guys can see, everything is connected, man, from the internet speed to the source you're pulling the stream from to the hardware that you're using. You want a lot of RAM so you have a larger buffer, and you want higher internet speed so you can download bits of the content into your buffer quicker than you actually play back. The next thing I would recommend you guys have is, you know, try to, if you can, try device via ethernet if you connect your device via ethernet you know instead of using wireless you can ensure that you're directly connected to the router and if you have good internet speed there'll never be any drop-offs because when you have wireless there could be a lot of interference you know a direct ethernet connection is is simply faster and more reliable than your Wi-Fi connection so if you if there's an option you always want to go hardwired. Now, some devices like, say, a Fire Stick or a Mi Box don't have an Ethernet port on there. Now, you could buy an adapter and try to get, you know, hooked up via Ethernet wire that way. Or you can just buy any old Android box that has an Ethernet port and you could hook up to your uh, your router via wire, via hardwire. But um, if you can't do any of that or you just say, you know what, I have a Mi Box or I have a... Fire stick. I don't care about any of that. Just make sure that you have the option for a five gig connection. Because most routers nowadays, when you buy a router nowadays, it's a dual band connection, which comes with a 2.4 gigahertz and a five gigahertz connection. Five gigahertz connection is not as fast as a, um, a Ethernet connection, but it's better than a 2.4 gigahertz connection. Now, my Mi Box, for example, if you look at my Mi Box connection, I'm hooked up to my five gig. Uh, wireless connection and it's maybe about 15 feet away from my router so I'm getting pretty much the maximum speed that I'm paying for with for my ISP hooking up to my 5 gig connection so again if you guys can't hook up to um, your router directly with Ethernet try to make sure you have a 5 gig wireless connection if you have a dual band router alright guys if you have a dual band router, hook up to that 5 gigahertz connection. The next thing I want to talk about is um, the hardware. Hardware is very important. And let me just say, let you know how I troubleshoot a lot of my streams, you know, to find out whether it's something on my end or, or the provider's end or whatever. I take my Galaxy phone. I take my S9, right? And I have my Fire Stick hooked up. Say I'm looking at a, a movie. I'm streaming something from... Terrarium TV. I'm streaming a movie. When I'm streaming it on my Fire Stick, I'm like, damn, this shit keeps free. This shit is just like freezing, freezing. It's kicking me out, whatever. What I do is I take that same exact movie that I'm watching on my Fire Stick. 
I open up Terrarium on my Galaxy, and I stream the same exact movie. If the movie has the same exact issues that I'm having on the Fire Stick, I know it's not the issue with the Fire Stick. It's either my internet or it's something on the provider's end. Simple. I, I automatically eliminate my device right there. Now, if it's playing perfectly smooth on my S9 while I'm hooked up to the wireless, that means my Fire Stick is having the issue. That's how I troubleshoot. I take one extra powerful device and I leave my Fire Stick where it is. And oftentimes you will find that the Fire Stick could be the culprit, you know, because it's a lesser spec device. You can't compare a Fire Stick to a Galaxy S9 phone or a Mi Box, Nvidia Shield, things like that. So a lot of times hardware could be the culprit, guys. So if you have a Fire Stick and you're trying to stream these, these heavy files, these 1080 and 4K streams, you might have to look at a, 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 a superior spec device. And that's why I'm using the Mi Box now. I have a Galaxy tablet as well. I use my laptop for streaming certain content. So it could be a hardware. So you might want to look at that. Hardware is the next thing that should be on your list if you're having issues with uh, buffering and also uh, just any random kickouts or streaming issues. All right, so let's move to the next thing. Um, when you talk about APKs and third-party Kodi add-ons, you got to realize sometimes the issue could lie with the add-on settings or the APK settings. There's a lot of times where just a little change in the settings and the configuration of the add-on or the APK can make the world of difference. For example, you guys know I, uh, I made an updated video on um, the Morpheus TV APK. And just by changing the buffer size and the buffer settings in the APK made a world of difference. I watch everything on my um, my Mi Box now with the correct settings. If you guys can check out the Morpheus TV APK um, breakdown, my settings breakdown, make sure you go check out that video. But my thing is, even if you have the correct internet speed, you have the good hardware, RAM is good, uh, you have a ethernet hardline connection right into your uh, your router your cable modem whatever you want to call it and everything is good and you still having these buffering issues it could just be with the settings of your um your apk or your add-on so always go into the settings of every of any add-on that you have any apk that you have always look to tweak the settings and understand these things because in the world of streaming man these are things that have to become the norm. If you're going to be using IPTV, you want to cut the cord, you have to get familiar with the settings. It's not rocket science. Every add-on, every APK has their own settings. Some have more robust settings than others. So for me personally, I like APKs on add-ons that allow you to adjust, you know, what, what sources you fetch from, uh, buffer size, uh subtitles download things like that always tweak the settings turn off the things you don't need make sure you turn on the things you do need all right so that's a that's something that's very important all right the next thing that i want to talk about is say you want to use cody now right a lot of you guys still love your cody some of you guys say no cody you, it, strictly apks you don't want to deal with any bills any repositories whatever i'm here for everybody all you guys are under one umbrella with me, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna leave anybody out. So if you're using a Fire TV or a Fire TV stick, always clear your cache. When you clear your cache, this basically just clears all known cache files. A clear cache will help ensure you experience minimal freezing, minimal buffering, no random shutdowns during playback. So always have a clear cache. And the second thing you always want to do if you're using a Kodi um, add-on or just a Kodi build in general, if you have a Kodi build in general, always, always, always delete packages. And now when you delete packages, basically what that does is free up space by deleting zip install files of the add-ons that you have. And the only downside of deleting um, packages is you won't be able to roll back to the older versions of the add-on. But from my experience, nobody rolls back to older versions of add-ons. It's very rare. So always clear your cache. Always delete packages. Now, if you're using something like the Durex bill or the Kodi No Limits bill, 
those builds had those are um custom builds pre-configured custom builds where you set it up and all the backgrounds and add-ons are ready there for you guys check out the video on those if you haven't already done so durex and uh, the no limits build two of my favorite cody builds you could set up automatic maintenance with these custom builds where you don't have to manually clear cache delete packages and all that stuff right there you you set it and you basically forget it and every time you open up your cody build it takes care of the maintenance for you so if you're interested in the cody build that has these options i'm gonna leave a link in the description box make sure you check that out but again a lot of times it's all about the settings in your add-on and also about just doing proper maintenance for your cody add-ons and, and cody builds in general all right so the next thing i want to talk about is um bandwidth throttling now for those that don't know bandwidth throttling basically controls the speed of your network controls how much speed is being used at a given time your isp knows what you're doing so it's no secret if you don't have a vpn there's a couple scenarios if they see that you're not using a lot of bandwidth they could throttle you back and give you less bandwidth than what you're paying for assuming that you will never use all the bandwidth that is grimy but a lot of isps do it i ain't gonna call out certain uh isps i don't want no lawsuit against me and all that but certain isps do that assume that the customer won't even use the bandwidth anyway because they look at your bandwidth usage from month to month like say you pay for the 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 gigabit uh bandwidth and you're only using 30 percent of it each month and you just for some reason you just pay for the gig bandwidth just so you can say you had the latest and greatest they're just gonna throttle you all the way back you won't even realize it because based on the statistics they have you don't use all that shit anyway so they're gonna take your money and give you less than what you pay for they can also throttle your bandwidth if you're downloading and uploading significantly more than your neighbors now if you have a cable connection say comcast um and you're downloading heavy files you upload shit you have dropbox files you you do remote work and you, you you're always uploading and downloading and you're gaming a lot and your neighbor's some old lady that doesn't do much and whatever they could just throttle you back because cable is a shared connection i don't know if you guys some of you guys probably know that some of you guys don't shared connection means in a nutshell if everybody's using the internet at the same time there's going to be a slowdown and if that's why sometimes if you go on the internet at night you have uh, higher speeds because less less of your neighbors are online your isp can also throttle your speed if you use certain apps or streaming services remember when uh comcast throttled bandwidth if you use netflix a couple years ago this is not uncommon so if your isp sees you streaming heavy off of like say terrarium they can just throttle you back and make the stream unplayable unwatchable because they see what you're doing if you're not protected by a vpn speaking of vpn some people use a vpn to avoid getting throttled altogether but then certain vpns actually slow down your internet speed anyway so it'd be a moot point so you have to do your homework and see what works best for you in your given situation but that is another issue that some people tend to neglect throttling is real your isp see that you're streaming from certain apps certain services they don't like what they see or they're not making money off of it they can throttle you back and you're there blaming your equipment or not having enough internet speed say you do everything we just talked about in this video you did everything you're like yo fifth ave i'm still buffering everything's good internet hardware settings i'm still going through this buffering i can't take it well, it could be the actual host, whoever's hosting the content, whoever's providing the stream, whoever's providing the stream, it may be on their end. Why? If everybody's hitting the server at the same time, you're going to have random kickouts. You're going to see no streams available. You're going to have massive freezing and buffering. But then if you go at a later time in a, at night or early in the a.m. in the morning, that same channel will play perfectly. So sometimes it's the host, not necessarily the host. It's like bad and their servers are garbage. Is it sometimes, you know, you pay for you, you get what you pay for, guys. If it's free and everybody's hitting it at the same time, or if it's a um, playoff game on or 
a big event, Olympics, something like that, sometimes you're going to have freezing, random kickouts, shutdowns, all that. And, and it's just frustrating. That's why I always say, even if you get a cheap IPTV service, it's better than just, it's better than having just uh, Mob Droll UK TV now, which has now been renamed to TV Tap, by the way. CK TV, things like that. Those are good, good alternatives. But if it's your primary, you're going to experience the freezing, buffering, kickouts, and all that good stuff. Even if everything else is perfect, even if you're hardwired, even if you have the proper hardware, a uh, gigabit internet speed, even if you have a Mi Box and all of that, I've seen this. I have a Mi Box, and there's been situations with Swift, with, with Swift streams where I'm, this shit is just buffering, buffering. I switch players. I went from MX player to Yes player to this player, and it's just freezing. So obviously, the, it could be an issue with the host, the source itself could be the culprit. So that's why when when people discuss buffering, guys, they always say, "Oh, just do this and he will fix it." A lot these guys don't know what they're talking about because so many things could be the cause of your freezing. It's a lot of things. I've seen people, oh, let me, uh, oh, my internet is garbage, and they and they have they have fires internet, uh, quantum speeds, fifty up, fifty down, a hundred up, a hundred down. It's not your internet. Then you got people. They may have a um, great internet speed, but they hooked up to the wireless routers in the basement. They all the way up on the second floor. There's interference in between walls blocking this and that. So it could be your wireless. That's the issue. It could be the add on. That's the issue. It could be the hardware. That's the issue. Your low spec device like a um, fire stick. It could be great, but it can run into issues as well. Because like we discussed earlier in the video, buffer is all about the cache size, the RAM. The fire stick only has one gig of RAM. Where the NVIDIA Shield, I think, has 3 gigs of RAM, if I'm not mistaken. And if you have, like, a Galaxy tablet or MacBook Pro or even a Mi Box. Mi Box has 2 gigs of RAM. RAM is so important when it comes to buffer size. You know what I'm saying? The bigger the buffer, the better. And these, these are, these are so many things. So I had to make this video because a lot of people, your issue may be different. You know what I mean? It's like if you get sick, you go to the doctor. Somebody that has... A, a similar symptom to you it, it may not even be what you have they may not have gotten it the same way you got it it could be so many things so you have to diagnose it properly you have to you know break that watch this video a couple times because when you watch this video a couple times you're gonna be able to troubleshoot real easy you're gonna be like oh nah is this 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 you're gonna be able to tell your friends family whoever's hooked up whoever cut the cords on IPTV send them this video get with the program guys pretty much everything is vi in this video is what causes buffering streaming random kickouts and i've given you solutions on how you could address buffering and freezing all right guys i'm gonna cut the video here i don't want to get too crazy i try to keep it in layman's terms just wanted to be straight and direct this video was much needed so you know let me know what you guys think if you guys want to add anything maybe if i miss something or if you guys want to add something uh, give any advice that you have any any Thing you want to add to the community leave it in the comments below i do my best to respond but as you guys know i'm running multiple channels a lot of business going on got a lot of surprises for you guys so be on the lookout fifth avenue project so i'm gonna catch you guys in the next video stay tuned man yeah